In the past few years, I've been tagged in thousands of beats, done thousands of collabs, and hosted multiple beat battles. And the main issue that most producers have when making beats is their mixing. I'm gonna teach you how to mix, master, and EQ your beats and get them radio ready. Make sure to stick until the end because I'm gonna show you a very rare strategy which you can use to test whether your beat is ready or not to send out or release. So I have this beat here and on its own it sounds okay. But when you have multiple layers coming in later on, It sounds muddy and no one is going to want to listen to this. The first thing you're going to do is select every single one of your layers, which you can do by double clicking in FL Studio. Go over to insert one and do control shift L. I'm using FL, but you can use any software or hardware. The first thing you're going to want to do is set the levels. If you want, you can change the stereo separation to 100% merged, which is going to make it easier for you to hear what's going on when you're setting the levels. What's very important is leaving headroom. So you wanna make these melody layers come in and be a little bit quieter than you'd expect. I tend to stick it around minus 11 decibels. You wanna mix these layers one by one so they really mesh together properly. You wanna have in mind the one or two main melody elements. For example, this one here, and also these really carry the melody, so I want them to stand out and everything else to blend into the background. If I reset the stereo separation and listen to it normally, the melody sounds really good. Now it's time to mix the drums. I'm going to stick to those main two melody layers, just so I can actually hear the drums. Since I mix the melody pretty quiet, there's lots of room for the kick and 808 to really stand out. Most producers here will have their melodies much higher, and then to make the kick and 808 punchy, they make them way louder, and suddenly everything is distorted. So you want to mix lower, and then raise the volume to a normal level for the drum layers that you want to stand out. We have this background clap here, which is going to blend into everything. and the main clap really stands out. We then have the hi-hats. They really carry the rhythm of the whole track, so they're really important to stand out. So already the mix sounds pretty good. But now I'm gonna add some EQ and effects to make it sound even better. I'm gonna grab this melody, for example, go into the EQ, I'm gonna change it to this cut preset here. And I'm gonna cut out some of the low end for the melody. It's just gonna stop this melody from clashing with other melody layers and the bass, because the bass fits in this frequency band. And if you listen without the preset, and then with it, it sounds very similar, but you're cutting out a lot of frequencies down the bottom that are gonna clash. You wanna keep cutting out low frequencies until you start to hear it change the sound, and then you move it back slightly. You don't need to do this for every melody layer, but I tend to do it with the melodies that have a low end. I also like adding a distortion onto the 808. A little bit of reverb onto the hi-hats. I turn down the decay and turn down the wet so it just really blends into the beat. For added effect, you can add a delay onto the open hi-hats. And if you want to add any other type of delays, reverbs, or effects, now would be the perfect time to do it. For example, we have this chord progression here. And I think it would sound amazing with a side chain. It's not crazy noticeable, but it makes it sound like there's some life to the melody and like it's breathing.
So that's the mixing and the EQ done. Now we're gonna do some mastering. There's multiple ways you can master a beat. The most popular ones are using a soft clipper, using a maximizer, or using a compressor. The soft clipper is one of the simplest. I'm gonna grab Fruity Soft Clipper. Now I'm gonna drag the post up. You can see that the beat is currently hitting at about minus six. If I go and increase the post, it raises the volume of the beat without it distorting. You could also use a plugin like Fruity Compressor and increase the gain. One of my favorite methods is using Ozone 9. I go and decrease the character to about one, and then I go and decrease the threshold until it starts to clip. This is a great way to find out if your beat is too complicated or if there are too many layers. Go and grab an acapella. I just have this Drake in Future one. It's 140 BPM. So I'm actually gonna lower the BPM down to 140. Double click on the sample, right click on time and click project tempo, then change mode to auto. Then I'm gonna change the BPM back up to 140, which is what I want the track to be. Now I'm gonna click yes to restretch all channels. We can actually send this acapella to the mixer track. I wanna have a look in the EQ. Seven Mercedes, I keep them coming. Keep them. Fuck all these bitches, I keep them coming. I pull up right now, I'm parallel. I hit your block on the swangles. And we can see where Future's vocals Seven are coming Mercedes, in, which is mainly from C4 up to about C8. Then if we go and mute this acapella, go and grab an EQ for the whole actual track. We can go and see which part of our beat Future might be fighting with if he wants to rap over it. And one thing we can actually do is go into this melody here and just raise it an octave. It sounds so much less intrusive, so it may be something to keep in mind. Another option is going into the EQ for that melody layer and just lowering some of these middle frequencies here. You can come around here cause the I be hanging around here, famous. This is without the EQ. Seven Mercedes, I keep them coming. Whereas with the EQ. Seven Mercedes, I keep them coming. Fuck all these bitches, I keep them coming. I pull up right now in parallel. I hit your block on the swangles. It ends up mixing a little bit nicer. So this may be something to keep in mind when you're going and EQing your levels, if you want to go and lower the volumes in some certain frequency bands. And if we go and listen later on in the beat, we can hear that there's too much going on here. Got a ghost brush and I pop shit. I'm a dope boy with that cop. I think the main culprit here is his guitar, so I'm actually gonna delete it for this section of the beat when there are all these melody layers. Got a ghost brush and I pop shit. I'm a dope boy with that cop. The same as this bass here. A lot of producers make their melody layers louder because they're worried about them sounding really quiet in the intro. One thing you can do is right click on the volume of the master track and click create automation clip. And you can go and raise the master volume at the start, which is gonna make your melody intro sound louder. You could also do this for every melody layer on its own and you'll have a bunch of automations down here. But this is a quicker way of doing it. On top of adding a plugin to your master that makes the whole track sound louder, like a maximizer. You could also go and add a plugin like an RC20 if you wanted a low I kind of buy. So without it, I'm with the plugin turned on. It really adds to the vibe of the track. I hope you learned a lot from this mixing and mastering tutorial. I hope you go and use it to make some amazing tracks. All the samples in these beats were from the Emotional Essence Library. You can get it for 80% off by clicking the link in the description. It has over 10,000 royalty-free samples and MIDI for every single emotion. Make sure to save this video just in case because in the future, you may wanna come back to it and I'll see you in the next video.